Hello and welcome to the Raising Men Show, and I'm your host, Craig Carlisle. Yeah, man, these are the days I love. The days when I'm on air with you, we're together, we're living life, doing life together. Yeah, we call them Super Tuesdays. But the blessing now is that you can listen to the Raising Men Show every day, any time of the day, right here on Raising Men TV. You know, that's a blessing because I've been on radio stations for almost 10 months now. And it's pretty, it's pretty awesome. The Lord has given us another opportunity to reach, teach, learn, grow together. That's awesome. So today we're talking about joy. Okay, yeah, joy and happiness. Yeah, I'm not going to sing. I I told you, if you've been following the Raising Men show for a while, since its inception, and, and even if, or if you're new to it, I have song lyrics are me. I used to DJ a lot, and whenever I hear song lyrics and it match my situation, man, I just, I'm not going to sing it, but it comes to mind, joy and happiness, you know, because they go together. There are, there are an, a match set when we're talking about it. In sentence form, but in, in 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 song form, but they're really polar opposites. Well, what are we talking about? Happiness is a temporary condition. You know, it's really passing. It's really here today, gone the next moment of today. You know, it's not even gone tomorrow because sometimes we're not even happy through the end of that day. We can be happy when we're doing our favorite thing and we're eating our favorite food. Oh man. I, like I know last night I was having a great chicken and pasta dish and with corn and some, a, a great sauce that it was in. Man, that made me happy. And in, and sometimes I, I've been one to struggle with stress eating. So when I eat a, a dessert or favorite food, it just makes me just, oh. But those are happy moments because a few minutes later when I realized, man, I should have eaten that. I should have eaten so much. It was contrary to what my plan was for healthy eating and healthy living and, you know, losing these few extra six or seven pounds I've picked up. I want to get down to an ideal weight. I've got a goal in mind. So all of a sudden that happiness that I had when I was eating that food and it was just tasting so wonderful. It's gone. It's filled with remorse. I was just feeling bad about myself. I was like, oh. But that's all right. I had to get back up again. And I'm going to start that, that healthy eating lifestyle again. And I'm going to continue moving forward. And I'm going to make it a few more moments and a few more days farther than I was the first time. But joy, and that's different. So joy is that feeling that's deep inside. It's that driving force or fuel or it's what makes you really want to go. You know, because there's days when I know that all of us feel like we don't want to get up or don't want to do what needs to be done. Don't want to start that hard task. And we know we've got stuff in front of us. We just don't want to do it. And we some of us put it off like me. I'm a procrastinator. So or I shouldn't put that out there. So I cancel those words. I've in my past, I've struggled with procrastination. And so joy is one of the things that I learned that is it's the fuel for life's journey. It's what makes me get up. It's what makes the procrastination go away. And what it's what makes the completion of the tasks possible. Because if you don't have that inward, inward joy, inward happiness, inward feeling of excitement about life and what you're doing, man, life can be bad. People often often equate that nasty negative feeling when you don't have joy with depression. That's one way to call it. Opposite of joy is depression. And you don't want to be there. Depression sucks, man. It's a, it's not a good place. It's like being in prison, right? And in, 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 in so many cases, though, it's being in a prison without bars because we can be out of depression at any moment. We can choose to get up off the mat. We can choose to believe more in our life at any moment. It's all about our perception and our perspective. We just have to change it. But that's what that's where joy comes in. If we don't have it, man, it's a tough thing. I mean, I hope none of us have ever run out of gas in our vehicles. 
motorcycle, plane, car, truck, boat, you name it. I hope, I hope we've never run out of gas before. Because when you run out of gas in a vehicle, man, you're stuck on the side of the road somewhere. Or in some cases, you're stuck in your driveway or on the freeway. In any case, you're stuck somewhere and you're not able to go where you need to go, where you want to go, where someone else is depending on you to be. You can't be there because your vehicle's stuck. You've got to wait for someone to come and get you off the side of the road, whether it be, you know, some other roadside assistance or a friend. And well, that's, that's a roadside assistance as well. But you've got to get to the spot to get you some gas and a gas can and bring it back to the vehicle and pour this little one gallon or two gallons of gas into the car. And in some cases, running down the sides of the car, then you can get it to start up. And some vehicles, you know, if you have a little super fancy car, you can't just start it like that after you've run out of gas. You've got to hit the reset button in a certain way so the car knows, oh, yep, it's safe to start up again because there is fuel there. And doing that, it's it's terrible. It takes a lot more time. It takes a lot more out of you to do these things. And it's just like with our life. If we allow ourselves to get to the point where we don't have that fuel to drive us, to get us off the mat, we can sometimes choose to turn to other things that keep us down. Drugs, alcohol, other types of addictive behaviors. Some people are addicted to sex or eating or drinking. It's not always alcohol some people are drinking. Some people are addicted to cigarettes and nicotine. Some people are addicted to sodas and sugary drinks. and You name it, you can be addicted to a variety of things. But a lot of that comes from a lack of joy because you're replacing that feeling of pleasure, that feeling of motivation, that feeling of mm, that gets me going with some false fuels, some false additives, some something that's just not true. God is the only thing that provides joy. I know the old folks used to sing songs back in the day that, you know, Pain makes sorrow make last for a night or pain may last for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Well, you know what? There's moments when we can't wait for wait till morning for joy to come. We need joy to come right now in the middle of the midnight situation where we're in. Well, maybe it's just me. But when sometimes I'm asleep and the devil wants to come and send plague thoughts and make me believe that my situations are bigger and bigger and make sure make me think that my situation is not going to get any better. Those are the moments, if you have those times when you hear that self-talk that you're not good enough and you're not going to make it or this is going to happen or that's going to happen and that you're not going to make it and you're not good enough and you're not worthy enough and you're not handsome enough, you're not pretty enough, you're not funny enough. You know, the enemy always speaks to you in the opposites of what God thinks of you thinks of us, thinks of me. The enemy always says the things to us that are directly opposite to what the Lord has for us to be, what the Lord thinks of us and what the Lord is going to do for us. So when you hear those voices that in your head that, you, that you're not going to make it, that you're going to be a failure, that you ought to just kill yourself and just be done because the world will be better, a better place without you or they don't deserve to, to be a part of your life or you don't deserve to be a part of their life or you're not handsome enough to get that girl and she'll never look at you or you're not handsome or pretty enough to look at that guy and get him to look at you because you're not whatever and you're not that ideal weight, you're not that ideal size and height and don't have that fancy trendy outfit, you know. All of those are things that are so not of God. So none of them should be anything that we should ever listen to. Old folks used to say, that's a lie from the pit of hell. And I used to laugh, but you know, it's true. It's a lie. And then there's often times that we, since we've allowed ourselves to listen to the enemy for so long, that we just tell ourselves that we're not good because it's a condition. It's, for those of you who've heard anywhere into social behavioral science, and you may have heard of the Pavlov's dog or Pavlov's experiments, where this, ex- this scientist was trying to verify the behavior of a dog, of an animal. So every time he would set food and out for his dog, he would ring a bell. 
So this be over time and over time, days and weeks went on that this scientist would come and he would set his food out for his dog and he would ring a bell and the dog would come and eat and set his food out another time and he would ring a bell and there became time when the dog knows every time I hear this bell and every time I see my master put this thing, this bowl down, I, it begins to salivate, it gets to look for this bowl, begins to be excited. Well, he did another portion of the experiment where he just rang the bell and did not place the food down just to see what the dog's response would be. And he noticed that when he, when he rang that bell, the dog would salivate. He would come looking at that same spot where the bowl would normally be and looking at its lips and, you know, it would be like, well, looking at his master, like, hey, where's the food? Well, the same is with us. We, we, we sometimes have a mindset that we've allowed to, to have been created for so long to listen to the negative narrative and you hear the bad things and I would not good enough. And we hear all of the things that are so not con, not what God has and wants for us that we believe it. it it's natural. It's, it's a part of the course that we begin to believe it. That we begin to respond to it, that we begin to think that it's the way it is, that I'm never good enough. I'll never have enough money. I'll, you begin to speak death into our lives. It takes our joy away. It robs us of that valuable fuel for life's journey that if the, it, it wants to put us in that depressed mindset. Again, for those who are you, those of you who are just joined the broadcast, you've reached the Raising Men Show, and I'm your host, Craig Carlisle, and we're talking about joy, and the topic is joy, and because joy is the fuel for life's journey, and we're just talking about what we need. And joy is a fuel. Joy is an additive. Joy, hey, the additive is it's what makes the engine go. It makes you get up out of the bed and off the couch and push yourself away from the table if you're dieting and put that fork down if you're dieting and put that cup down if you're trying to break a drinking habit and puts that cigarette down if you're trying to break an addictive habit. It's the one that makes you put the phone down to text that person you know not to text. Joy is that, it's that feeling that allows yourself to look at your face in the mirror and not cringe. Joy is that, is that permanent feeling, that constant feeling that's deep down inside that allows you to be who God wants you to be. It allows you to be a part of God's plan. It allows you, well, you're always a part of God's plan. It allows you to be excited about being a part of God's plan. I'll put it that way. So the scripture that we're going with today to back this up, that we're bolting together with this. And if you want to find this, this is on my lactoseintolerance.com <clears throat> website. It's the devotion I'm running over there. And we're going from 1 Thessalonians, the 5th chapter, 16 through the 18th verses. And I'm reading out of the message version, message translation. And it says, be cheerful no matter what. Pray all the time. Thank God no matter what happens. This is the way God wants you to belong to Christ Jesus to live. <clears throat> you know, think about that. Be cheerful no matter what, because I know we have times in our life and moments in our day that I know for me, I know I'm not cheerful. I'm just not excited about what may be happening or what may have happened and what's in front of me that I've got to get do get done, but I've got to get, I've got to do these things. I've got to check the box. I've got to be ready to go. Cause if I'm not, these, these problems are going to stay there. It doesn't matter how long we procrastinate. And if you really get down to it, that's what got the children of Israel jacked up. And in that 40 year trek around and around and around because they weren't cheerful. They avoided the task at hand. They decided not to, they didn't have joy in their journey. They, had begun to murmur and they wanted to return to Israel. They thought, well, they could at least get a free meal. They can at least get something to drink. At least they wouldn't perish out here in the desert. And some of us may be thinking the same thing, that if I don't get up and do that task, I can at least do better. I can go back to my life before. But for a lot of us, there's nothing to go back to. That spouse that, that you were so in love with that doesn't love you, they're not there. They don't want you. They're, they're already with someone else. They're, they may not even be alive anymore. That relationship is already done. Some people, people may often say that ship has sailed. Oh, if you've lost your job, I can just go back to the job I had. Well, some of you got laid off. Some of you got fired from that job. 
Sometimes the job is even shut down. There is nothing to go back to. Some of us are still living in those past times when the good times were there. Oh, yeah, there's a song, too. Good times. But for a lot of us, there's nothing to go back to. You'll find some people out there wearing the same clothes, driving the same car from an era where their life was just wonderful. It could be last week. It could be last year. It could be 25 years ago when their life was wonderful and they're staying stuck in that time where it was good. You know, it has the same haircut, same hairstyle from the 70s, from the 80s, even from the 60s, the 40s, depending how old you are. But I'm just saying some of us have that same hairstyle, the same haircut, same hair length. Same clothes. I understand that, you know, the styles come back around, but some of us had the original style that was cut back in the 70s or the 80s. You're still wearing that same stuff. I'm not sure how it still doesn't have any moth or holes or worn out. You must take immaculate care of it. But some of us are still rocking those styles when life was good. But, you know, life's good now. But you got to live it. Right, because I, I, I've written in a, on my Facebook community, the art of living. That there's an art to living, and it has everything to do with living. Because life is good right now, and those are declarations and principles that we need to say to ourselves every day. And even in this case of the topic for today, joy is the fuel for life journey. And the, the declaration for you to get up today after the broadcast, you're doing the broadcast, you say, you know what? I have joy. I'm going to declare it now. I have joy. I have joy. The fuel for life's journey. I have it. He's speaking those things into existence. You're speaking those things as though they were because you may not feel like you have joy. You may not feel excited about living. You may not want to break that addictive mentality and habit. You may not want to get up and you know what? Just keep it right there. I'm going to set that right there. You might not want to get up. But you got to. You can't stay where you are. You cannot stay where you are. You'll miss your blessing. You'll miss the promised land. You'll you'll sit around your blessing you for forty years. And I tell you what, I don't. I know for me, I'm a young man. I'm in. I'm learning to enjoy life. And I'm going to declare it again. I'm enjoying life, and I'm going to continue to enjoy life. And I'm learning to enjoy life again to the fullest. I've allowed myself not to for several years, but we're we're, we're walking this this together, right? Because, you know, because if you're new to the Raising Men show, this is a show where real men have real talk about real life. So we have real talk together. So real talk. I've allowed myself not to enjoy life the last several years. And I've smiled on the outside. I've laughed and, oh, you know, hey, how you doing? How you doing? I've even had a person who was one of the godparents to one of my sons believe that if there was nothing wrong with me, if there was something wrong with me or my kids, that they would know it. I would have called them. They would be able to see it because my kids were clean and their hair is cut and they're, you know, they're, they're happy looking, they're smiling and laughing, and that's just not who I am. People believe that if they see me and they're just thinking, that, hey, well, Craig's smiling, he's laughing, that's Craig, he's got it, he's strong, he, he doesn't need anything, he doesn't need any help, he doesn't, I don't need to call him, I don't need to text him, I don't need to check on him, he's good. When you have that mentality about someone, those are the times when you need to reach out to them. Pick up your phone, call, text, send an email, go knock on the door, something. Because we need each other. Those are moments when the Lord is speaking to you about a person that you need to pray for them and you need to let them know openly that you're praying for them. I understand, yeah, praying in, in quiet and in secret is just as effective. I understand the spiritual realm is a, is a legalistic realm. It's a, you're speaking life there and you everything is contractual. I get it. But also in the natural world, people really need people. I understand hurt people, hurt people. I get it. I, I do. And harboring bitterness against, you know, people that you love or people that have done you wrong is tough because that's steals from your joy because once you allow yourself to be bitter and and be upset and angry and sad because no one helped you and no one came to check on you and no one loves you those are opportunities and footholds for the devil to, to be able to have a stronghold in your life to be able to suck your joy straight out of your tank 
make you feel like you're unworthy, make you feel like, you know, I don't even need to live because no one cares if I live or die. Trust me, I know I've struggled with in my past with behavior and thoughts of suicide. I get it. I've, I have children who have expressed the thoughts of killing themselves because they don't think that they're loved or not really loved, but they're not worthy enough that they have no hope. But you know what? I have to stand and, and, op- and admit to that openly that, you know, we struggle with that. I work with my kids daily on that. Yeah, we've also seen counselors. Yeah, I get it. We're not stupid enough to go and think that I'm, I'm smart enough in my own to, to help any one of us with these behaviors and thoughts. But I tell you, one thing, the one person I go to first is God. Lay those kids on the altar daily. We work through scripture as often as we can. We're you know, praying to get seven days a week going through our devotions but and prayer time. But I tell you what, I'm not going through this by myself. And I encourage you, if the Lord, not if, but when the Lord puts a person on your heart and puts them on your mind, reach out to them. Pray for them. For some of us, it may be someone that we don't care for, someone we haven't talked to in a long time, somebody that's hurt us real good. But you know, the Bible does talk about praying for those that despitefully use you. We need to pray for our leaders in government, to pray for one another. That's scripture. That's not, those are not options. They're not pieces that you can choose and pick. And I'm going to believe that scripture. I'm going to believe that principle. I'm going to stand on that thought. I'm not going to stand on the other. I don't believe that one, so I'm not going to do it. The Bible is the inspired word of God. So if it's the inspired word of God, it's, it's what God wants for our life. It was when the author was pinning it down or chiseling on the tablet or writing it on the papyrus, depending on how they, were, they created the wording. It was inspired by God, like these radio shows inspired by God, like teachings from your famous pastors that you enjoy, and the, the declarations and the devotions that I write, inspired by God. It's not a choice. Oh, I don't, I'm gonna, I don't want to believe that. It's from the Lord. So if you don't want to believe it, then you don't want to believe in God. So God, God is not a man that he would lie. So what? So when the Lord is putting things on your heart and you're listening to the Raising Men show with your host, Craig Carlisle, and I just am so excited about the topic today, joy. It's the fuel, it's the fuel for life's journey. And I'm excited for those of us out there who've been listening to the Raising Men show a while. There's a great news. We're in new platforms, podcasts, on Raising Men TV channel on YouTube. The Lord is taking us to parts and places unknown, and I'm excited because he's also taking me there with joy. Because I'm giving my bitterness back to God to take care of, to have. I'm laying that at the altar. Been bitter for a while angry and mad and disappointed at people who I thought were going to be there for me and my kids. I've been bitter at my late wife for passing. I've been bitter at the fact that I lost my job last year. I've been bitter at the fact that we've had to, we're having to move. I've been bitter because my life isn't what I wanted it to be for the picture I painted in my mind. But you know what? The joy that I have inside and I'm having more and more that's growing is the fact to know that God has me on a path and a plan that he has created. So Romans 8.28 is still valid for us that all things are for the good. For those who love God and are called according to his purpose, because I know I love God. And I'm called to the purpose he has for my life. And it's the same for each one of you that are listening. If you love God, then I know your calls or the purpose he has for your life. So listen, get up, move towards God. Ask God, where are you working at today, Lord God, so I can move towards you. We need to do that today. I'm going to pray for you all. So, Lord, I pray for all those that are listening to this broadcast that they 
they get their joy back if they've lost it. And if they have joy, Lord God, I just pray for an extra measure of joy for them. Fill them all to overflowing, God, so they can be cheerful no matter what and and learn to pray all the time and thanking God, thanking you, Father, no matter what happens. Because this is the way that you want us to live and belong to Jesus to live. Amen. And you've been listening to The Raising Men Show. And I'm your host, Craig Carlisle. And join us, sign up, subscribe to the YouTube channels. Subscribe to us on iTunes and in the Google Play Store. Download the broadcast, share it. Tell a friend. We're looking for regulars here. We know the Lord is doing some things and doing what the Lord has got for us. He's doing something. I have joy behind it. And knowing that this is going to help at least one person. This is when, that's what matters. It's everything. So if you don't think your life matters, you know what? Continue to replay this message. Read 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 16 and 18, so you can be cheerful no matter what. So you can learn to pray all the time. So you can thank God no matter what happens. Because this is what God wants you, wants for you, who belong to Christ, to live. See you all next time on The Raising Men Show. This is Craig Carlisle, the host of The Raising Men Show, and I'm also an executive producer of the independent feature film, Restored Me. I lost everything. There's something I didn't do. What type of God is going to watch a man get up on his feet and then kick him right back down and get drugged through the dirt again? It's a powerful, feel-good dramedy that centers around a young man trying to restore his relationship with his young daughter and her mother. Talk to him just like you're talking to me. Where have you been, kid? These people take communion from me. I am their God. This film speaks to restoring your faith and pushes a bold message of positivity and motivation. The cast includes Gary Owen, Bill Duke, Will Young Lee, Matt Gerald, Richard T. Jones, Malik Yobo, Yancey Arias, and Bo Casper Smart, just to name a few. Restored Me is available on over 100 digital markets including iTunes, Amazon, and on demand from your local cable provider. Buy it, rent it, either way I'm asking you to watch it. It'll bless your life.